Hey everybody, welcome back to another Blind Tuesdays. Hope you guys have been enjoying the content on the channel as of late. Hope you guys enjoy this new series. Uh, this one, yeah, it's again just an excuse to review more content, but hope you guys are will enjoy it. Um, and this one is um, has a fascinating history attached to it. That film being uh, Last Tango in Paris, which was uh, written and directed by Bernardo uh, Bertolucci. I think that's how you say his last name. Um, Notable uh, Italian director, uh, also did uh, The Last Emperor in 1987, which apparently went on to uh, garnish some awards and stuff like that. Um, starring uh, Marlon Brando uh, as uh, Paul, who is a hotel owner, and uh, he's in a bit of a t uh, of an emotional uh, turmoil. He's... Um, wrestling with the passing of his of his wife who had committed suicide and he gets involved with a with a younger woman and they start an anonymous sexual relationship um and it, it details their individual um uh, per personalities and ultimately uh, what the film is is about a study of emotional states and about tortured uh, souls, lost souls, to be very specific, because the film starts off with these two paintings, and these and the paintings, I believe, illustrate that sort of con that sort of idea about tortured and lost souls, and you know the just how every like piece of yourself just no longer feels right. Like there's always a grayness to every part of yourself, um, and the clarity is 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 not as 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 um as um as uh as uh knowing um and the music kind of plays to that as well with these individual settings you know if there's you know these haunting ghostly like um strings that play and that's like kind of meant to illustrate the reality of a situation and then it becomes more alive and much more uh cinematic and that kind of illustrates a ignorance you know within uh, certain sequences, particularly within the youthful side side of things, um, but it also is representing a distinction of of like I said, emotional states between that of a youthful, blind nature and that to a narcissistic, toxic, and very cynical type of uh, type of persona. Um, Obviously, the youthful being the the young one, which the actress was named is a uh, Maria Schneider, um, or Schneider. I think I forget. I don't know how you pronounce her last name, but um, she her I thought her performance was good, um, and um, we'll talk more about her in a second though, because uh, there was a lot of stuff that happened with her in particular that I feel uh, um, give a little more color to the review. It actually and also kind of. Uh, uh, validates my overall feeling of the film, which is that it's a bit of a, a mixed bag. Um, but on the other side of things, uh, Marlon Brando, I think, is just mesmerizing. I'm not as fond of Brando as a lot of people are. I mean, obviously, he is, uh, you know, he's he's very, you know, I, I was actually, you know, taught a lot about Brando in acting class. So, you know, he's a very influential uh, performer, one of the most well-known performers uh, of all time. Um, I didn't mind him in his other work, like Godfather, obviously his most famous work and on the waterfront. But with this, I think that he brings a sincerity to the role that I think is really impactful and again, just mesmerizing to watch. Now, um, the, the aura of it is rather aimless and that quality is well suited, but it also feels a bit, um, uh, distant, notably, notably distant. And it starts to present a blindness in its study, um, which I think, which, which leads to where I'm basically getting to the, uh, the controversy that surrounded the film. Some grotesque elements, one element in particular, which is a, a rape sequence that, um, I will say I blocked out. I didn't watch, I, I saw, I saw, I, I, I had the idea of where we were going, and then once we, once things started to happen, I just blocked it out, because, because of um, how long it was playing, 
And also, I'm just reading my notes here. Um, what I was just literally seeing, um, you know, the film was given a, uh, an X rating uh, back then, and then it was re released uh, uh, in an R rated cut in apparently the 80s. Um, and then was then reclassified as an NC-17. And it makes absolute sense why it's an NC-17 film because of that one sequence. And also for the fact that you're seeing full frontal and a bunch of other things. Now, there is a history with this, um, a controversy that spewed from that particular sequence involving uh, Maria Schneider, who... Now, the, the scene was simulated, so it wasn't an actual sexual act that was done on camera, but there was a it was apparently a very traumatic thing for her. It apparently was not in the script and, uh, and she was, you know, basically just informed on the day, it seems. Um, and she felt very uncomfortable doing it. Um, and she felt, uh, humiliated as I'm reading right here. And also another notable thing about the film in terms of its development is that it was spawned from the director's sexual fantasies. And this is a quote that I found from the director, uh, or at least from uh, some some person who uh, it says uh, that he he once dreamed of seeing a beautiful nameless woman on the street and having sex with her without ever knowing who she was. So these sort of now now I bring this all up because as the film progressed after this sequence played, which I said is just extremely grotesque and just completely hideous. Um, the desire to progress and my the desire to just sympathize just becomes more and more absent as the length plays. And I found myself just completely against Brando's character. I found myself just just disgusted by him. I was no longer sympathetic towards him. I, and, as, and, and really, I actually started to wonder, because the whole thing about him is that his wife has killed himself and his wife apparently was also a cheater. And that is what forms this, as, as of what the film tells us, is what forms his persona, is why he is the way he is. But I disagree on that. I think that there's more to it. You know, there you have to ask, why did she cheat? And when you see how Brando is throughout the film, his character, um, it makes you wonder if he was like this with his wife. If It makes you wonder if he was this abusive and if he was this, um, this toxic. And what may perhaps drove her to do such things, um, you know. Um, and it's not that the it's gray that's represented in the film. It's me asking questions to something that is being rather blind in its own story, um, because it, it it makes it out as if this is a romance, and it's like, you know, it's playing it up as if like, um, oh, there's there's a you know, there's a there's a reason. Eventually, you know, you're supposed to buy into the fact that there is a love somewhere present. There, is, there is, you know, a connection between the two. It, it it evolves into something more manipulative and more deceitful, and much more uncomfortable. Um, I just it was hard to get the se sequence out of my head, even blocking it out. Like just the small portion of what I saw just really affected me and i completely understand for for snyder's case why she was heavily affected by that sequence um you know because of just the production of it and just the way that it was handled it's it was very very distasteful i didn't i, I don't understand why it had to linger i don't even understand why that sequence needed to be there at all um and it really affected the the general interest and my overall feeling of the film um, and, um, the director apparently has been, was, was trying to deflect it for, for many years, apparently saying that, oh no, it was simulated and oh no, she knew things or this and that. Um, so as far as I can tell, it was a simulated sequence. So thankfully nothing like that took place. Um, and apparently Brando was also an asshole apparently towards uh, Maria in the film as well when doing that sequence. Um, but Discussing the film proper, though, I think that it has um, brilliance in its technicalities. I think that the the usage of music and the the just the timing of its cuts and the overall just visual quality of the film, I think that it's it's it is just striking in that regard. And thematically, the overall 
idea of what the film is about, I think is interesting. This idea of lost souls and portraying that sense of torturedness through uh, that of a youth and someone who's a lot older. I think that it's very interesting. And Marlon Brando is terrific. But it is when we get to the that grotesque element is when you start to not- notice the blindness in its study of, of these emotional states and a notable distance that, that's, that forms because of that. Um, and I, like I said, I just found myself not sympathetic at all. I found myself just more and more uncomfortable and just wanting it to, to end mainly for the fact that I just, I, I just don't understand why it is we need to, um, to keep moving forward after that scene played. You know, it just felt like, um, the movie's trying to create a certain message. Bernardo was trying to create a certain message. And what I got from it was something very deceitful, very manipulative in design, and very questionable in terms of optics. But in terms of a craftsmanship, there is merit to be had. And in terms of a performance, there is merit to be had, absolutely. But it is absolutely riddled with questions and absolutely riddled in... Um, in um, in in a certain in a certain state of exploitation and just certain fetishes it's very very questionable in in many respects especially with that one sequence that plays um but for for what it offers thematically and from a performance and from technically speaking it's it's a it's a film that 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 maintained interest for me i still found myself interested even after that sequence played, it's only that that interest started to just to fade as time went on and on and on and on and on. And I just became more questioning of its, of its attitude and more questioning of, of, uh, of what it's, tr- of, of its overall messaging. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. I, I, there are elements to it that I found very captivating. And then there's others that I found to be very disturbing when you when you sit with it more and you consider um the general purpose of why it's there so 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 yeah i found last tango in paris to be to be good but i say that with a certain level of doubt so um so so those are my thoughts on last tango in paris and well uh, this being uh uh blind tuesdays we're going to go back to the wheel, hopefully something a little bit t- tamer this time. I could find something a little bit tamer. Um, and uh, we'll see what's up. We'll see what's going on for next week. So let's spin the wheel right here. And let me crank up the volume so you guys can hear it. And here we go. Three, two, one. And the film will be... a film from the 80s so i have to find a film from the 80s to watch um cool cool all right uh maybe i'll find something a little more tame um so um but uh but yeah any suggestions in the comment section below will be uh will definitely be considered and uh uh just you know submit any ideas and it has to be in the 80s guys that's the criteria now it has to be 80s so uh, it doesn't have to be genre specific. It just could be if it came out in the '80s, then that's it. So, so, so yeah. So that's gonna be it for me, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in, and let me know your thoughts about Last Tango in Paris. Let me know about the controversy surrounding that se- sequence. Uh, you know, if you guys are comfortable addressing it, let me know your thoughts. And if you guys just know more about that, the history of that, because I just did some small research on it. Um, uh, so just let me know about your thoughts, or if you know more about the history of the film in the comment section below and that's gonna be for me guys thank you guys for tuning in and until then i'll catch you guys in the next video